Hiya and welcome back. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm Megan and I love sharing out with people. So today what I thought I'd do is share some tips that I've come up with on how to paint sunrises. And maybe some of the tips will apply to sunsets too. I haven't practiced sunsets yet, but I spent a whole lot of time practicing sunrises recently. Like I filled two whole sketchbook spreads with practice and then did three full paintings of them, which are actually now for sale on my Etsy, but more on that later. I think the best way to start is to really look at your reference picture and to think what are the base colors? What are the flat gradients behind this picture? Because the sky, is always there's always a base gradient in the sky it could be just blues and obviously you probably know that it's a lighter blue lower down and it gets darker as you go up in some of these that's the case so obviously the first thing to do is to mix a nice blue though in some cases the blue might go down into a yellow it depends on what sunset you're doing like in some of these you see I've gone down into a yellow because then it sort of goes into the sand colour as well, or the ocean water colour. Obviously the sky is reflecting on the sand, so also looking at what's the base colour not only behind the sky but behind the sand, or I mean if you're on a beach though. <laughs> Sunsets! I keep saying sunset! Sunrises are best seen from the beach on the coast because there's just nothing in your way. I live nowhere near the coast and so I uh, didn't take any of these references, my aunt sent them all to me. They're, they're all photos of Sandy Mount Beach, Dublin, on one morning. These, these are all pictures, like the range of colour and sky and cloud in them is amazing and it's all from one morning. They were so fabulous. They're what inspired me to do all this practice because I wanted to be able to paint those pictures. They were so, so stunning. So once you've laid down those colours and actually about sky blues, I think they're quite a tricky thing to mix. Some of the things that helped me was this pot of mixing white that I bought because then it's not lowering the opacity of your colour, it's just making it paler. There's a difference, but there's two types of white and they do make a difference on your colour mixing. Another helpful thing for me was this cyan, I think cyan, pot of blue paint that I had. I should do some more practice mixing sky blues though, especially since that cyan's almost run out and like most blues that I have or that you can buy aren't that colour, they're ultramarine or some other, you can tell I don't have a lot of knowledge of paint yet, but I can use it and that's the important thing. Please allow this very satisfying paint beating onto the paper sound to introduce my next tip. I found that so fun <laughs> to do and to listen to. So, as you can see, I'm laying down the darkest colors of the clouds now. So you've laid down the gradient at the back and then the darkest cloud color. This is good because it's easier to layer up lighter colors now. And so you get lighter and lighter until you have the brightest highlights. And a very purpley color is good for this. I mean, depending on your reference and not to use black, you can get a dark enough color with mixing like different pinks and blues and purples, even with without using black, it, it was sucking up a lot of light, like it's very reflective. So if I had been using black, like imagine how much worse that would be. A great thing that worked out in this particular one was when the ocean got gotten a bit too muddy and the light from the sun wasn't really showing through properly, the paint was still wet enough that I got a palette knife and just scraped away at it. And that's where the texture of the paper really came in strong how it's it could take that scraping and at a nice rough texture like that wouldn't have worked out in my sketchbook so the type of paper really does help and i'm using this canvas paper it's really cool it's like a like fabric and it was able to take quite a lot of abuse and without getting ripped up or anything as you can see i'm swapping between two different paintings now and that's a good thing too because it's hard to be patient and let things dry, but if you're working on two things at the same time, it's not a problem. Letting those first few layers dry so then you can layer up different colours on top of those darks you put down. Otherwise everything gets very muddy. And then once you're just working on the fine detailed bits, you can settle down to one painting. The thing that really made this painting come alive was the texture I put on the sand. Where You know how like the sand goes into lumps, the way the tide 
rolls up on it. Adding those little patches was so helpful. It just it added a depth and a sense of perspective and distance as the patches got smaller, as they got further away from you. It, it added to the sweep, the curve of the beach. And it made the reflection more obvious, even though it's covering the reflection a bit, it's making it more obvious that it is a reflection from the orange cloud down to the orange on the beach. It, even though it's the smallest painting, it's my favorite. It's really good once everything's dry to, to really make use of the bristle texture of the brush to add nice little highlights in to really get your lightest parts. Do you like the more tip-based sort of a video or way of voice doing voiceovers? Because if you do, make sure to like and subscribe so that I know that, so that I know to make more like this. Ooh, also big announcement. I finally did it and opened an Etsy. It's got the same name as my YouTube channel, Megan White Art with a capital M-W-A. I'll put a link in the description and all the paintings in this video are available to buy on there. So check that out. Um, you could own some of my original artwork. It's, it was really, I, ha I started off, I oh know, look, I'll just have to make a whole video on that, but Doing Redbubble first really made it less daunting to start an Etsy and get into that whole selling thing. This has been so refreshing having a change from those other sunsets. Like they're really stunning and the colours in them are amazing, but I've been staring at them for so long that colour palette's like worn away my eyes. I know I said earlier it's good to put down the darkest of the clouds first, but in this case there just wasn't that much dark cloud. And if I put the dark and the lights were just so light that I did it the other way around. But you know, it's always gonna depend on the picture. And again, adding the texture, like fluffiness by making use of the brush. I also use a palette knife in a second to add the mountains back in because I was losing the definition and it was all getting a bit muddy. So the palette knife was really helpful there. I had been thinking of doing a full process walkthrough kind of a deal, but the footage I have is probably enough. And like, this has taken so long, these four paintings that I've done in this video, like so, so long. I've been, I don't know when I started, probably like a couple of weeks ago. I thought I'd be faster doing them, but nope. But I'm learning a lot. And hopefully I've been able to share some of that knowledge with you. I mean, I haven't done the voiceover yet. I've been a bit imaginative with this piece because I took it yesterday morning, this reference, when I went out to see the sunrise. And I live in an estate, so there are, there are fields around my estate and I managed to like jump and see over the hedge so I could see the sunset a bit better but there was still like a housing estate in the distance so I'm imagining if there wasn't a housing estate there. I suppose that's the beauty of art, however you want it. It doesn't have to be reality. Whatever happens, I'm definitely gonna scan these and put them on the old red bubble. There's a tree in my reference but I don't know if I wanna add it in. That'd be too much of a chance. Then if it turns out really badly, there's like, and I, I need to practice trees more before I have the confidence to just stick a tree in there. Man alive, it's crazy how different the color schemes are between these, like these ones and that one. Even this is sort of is quite different. Thanks so much for watching. It was great to do art with you again. Hopefully, you found some useful tips from this. Make sure to comment below. Which was your favourite artwork in this video? What do you think of me opening an Etsy? Or any other video types that you would like to see? Any, any subjects or pieces of artwork you'd like to see me try to create or challenges? All comment down below and share this video with your friends. Maybe you've got a friend who wants some tips on sunrises. So until next time, bye!